When working with Excel, there are many tools available that allow interaction with Python. One of the most popular tools is Pandas. The Pandas library, which is used primarily for data science, makes it super easy for us to examine, sort, or modify any data, even from Excel. But how does it do that? Pandas essentially creates a spreadsheet for us in our Python code called a data frame. This data frame has indexed rows and header columns that both store what's called a series. The series stores all the values in the rows and columns, almost like a list. Because both these objects are iterable, Pandas makes it easy to traverse and pick up the data. Using the data frame, we can do any kind of analysis or grouping we'd want, and export it to an Excel. Before we jump in, let's get Pandas set up via the pip installer in our command prompt. For my system specifically, I need to run pi-m pip install pandas. As you can see, I already have it. Now, let's open up Python in our terminal. If we import pandas and press enter, we see no errors and that means pandas was installed correctly. The first functions we're going to go over in pandas are ways to get your data. In pandas, you can create a data frame from lists or other objects in code. Since we're using Python with Excel, we're only going to look at how to create data frames by reading files that already exist. Now one tip I have before we get started is that I highly recommend following along with the documentation that's provided by Pandas. Many of the functions we'll be using have numerous flags and multiple features to access that are outlined there, and this tutorial will only use a few. So the first thing we're going to do is head over to our text editor and import Pandas. We do this by calling import pandas as pd. I'm also going to be importing a module of OpenPy Excel called Workbook that will allow me to show you saving to an Excel document. Once we have these, we just need to initialize our data frames with the specified contents. The cool thing about pandas is that you can read multiple types of files. This is handy because data can be structured in any way and you'll still be able to interpret it. So if we look at what we have in our working directory, you'll notice that we have an Excel file, a text file, and a CSV file. Now all we have to do is create data frame variables to specify for which kind of file we want. So we'll have a data frame for our Excel file, a data frame for our CSV file, and a data frame for our text file. Once we have those, all we have to do is use the pandas read function to grab the data from the file. So here, we'll have our pandas.read Excel, and at this point, we're supposed to specify the path variable. But because our files are in our working directory, all we need is the name. Now the same procedure follows for the other kinds of files. And we'll specify for a CSV file, and we'll also specify the name. And for the text file, we also use the read CSV function. Now this is because there's essentially not too much of a difference between a CSV file and a text file except for some little formatting differences. So first, let's look at how pandas formats our Excel file. All we have to do is print this to console and run it. You'll notice that pandas uses indices for rows and headers for columns. In our case, our indices are integers and our headers are strings such as region, units, sales, and exports. We'll be able to change this later, but let's move on to the next one. Now, we'll print out our text file. Now you'll notice here that pandas has a pretty handy feature where it'll abbreviate all of your data. So it takes lines 0 to 4 all the way down to 11,765, and that's pretty convenient. But you'll also notice that the data is formatted differently. The indices are still present, but the data is acting as a singular column. This is because our Word document is formatted in a way that tabs separate each column. Because of this, all we have to do is add a delimiter to specify that we're looking to separate by tabs. Now if we run this again, we should get a nice formatted output. And here we have our text file formatted into three separate columns like it's supposed to be. Now moving on to the CSV file. Let's run that through terminal. We can see that the indices are still intact, but the first row of data is acting as the header for the rest of the file. In order to prevent this, we need to specify that there is no header present in the CSV file. So all we have to do is add a header flag and specify none. When we run this again, 
we can see that now the headers are just integers. So let's change this to something that's a little bit more workable. All we have to do is use the columns function. So we have our df to csv columns, and we set it equal to a list. Now what do we want our columns to be? So first here we have John Doe, and then an address, a city, a state, and an area code. So we'll just use those for our headers. The first name, last name, address, city, state, and area code. So once we have that workable, we'll go ahead and save this to our Excel file. So we'll get rid of our print statement, and we'll use our save function. And then we get to choose a name for it. And remember, you always have to keep on your file extension. So for our Excel, it's an XLSX file, and we'll just call it modified. If we run this, our file should appear in our working directory. Let's open this up and see that it's formatted nicely with our indices, our headers, and all of our data. So there you have it. As you can see, Pandas is extremely useful when working with data from different file types.